This is a Model F Comptometer made by Felt and Tarrant from the 19-teens. It has eight columns of classy octagonal keys and a beautiful bronze-colored steel case. Check out that filigree. It's got a fairly lightweight crank which clears the dials to zero. It's also got this little button here. These little pushy things here. These turny things down here. They turn. The comptometer was designed by a guy named Dor E. Felt in the late 1800s. It was the original key-driven adding machine. That means you don't have to pull the crank after each number. You just type the number in and it appears right away in the register. Like 24 plus 13 looks like this. This makes it really fast to use. It's especially good for multiplication. Here's 587 times 32. It's the same basic concept that was used by the Burroughs calculator, which I did a video about a while back. So if you want to see more details about key-driven machines, you can watch that one. Actually, the original Burroughs calculator was a straight-up knockoff of the comptometer. The company sued Burroughs for patent infringement and forced them to change their design. Anyway, this machine is really great and has lots of nice details. Every comptometer machine from this time period had a plaque on it with patent information. The last date here says September 1914, so this machine was made at some point after that. You can get a better idea by looking at the unique serial number down here. Mine says 101790. The F series had numbers starting at 100,000 and they were produced from 1915 to 1920, so mine would have been made on the early side of that run. Everything about this machine is classy and functional. Let's just look at it from the bottom up. The display digits are all under a clear cover so they won't get dirty. Smart! These turny things down here are decimal point indicators. The machine was usually used for adding dollars and cents, so usually the decimal point goes here. That's why the keys are colored like that, by the way. But sometimes you want the decimal point somewhere else, like if I'm multiplying 15.3 times 5.12, I need three digits to the right of the decimal. So I put the marker here and then multiply. These little pushy things are called the cutoffs. You use them to prevent a carry into the next digit. This is useful when you're subtracting, like if I want 95 minus 72, I first type in the 95 and then I push the small numbers for 71. When you subtract, you use the small numbers for one less than the number you're subtracting. Anyway, this gives me 123, but the real answer is 23. To keep that extra one from carrying over, you hold the cutoff while you're doing it. Now check out these little holes here. They're up here too. These are actually the tops of little tubes that go deep into the mechanism inside and you're supposed to drip drops of oil into them. I'm not making this up. Here's some official instructions about this. You're supposed to put three drops of oil in each hole. Do not expect a machine to last if you do not attend to the oiling. Just like the Burroughs calculator, these keys are touch coded by a row. The even numbers are flat while the odd numbers are concave. They have these great octagonal button tops, which I always love. At the top of the machine is this little guy. Usually this key was red. Anyway, this is called the controlled key mechanism. This was a killer feature that the Burroughs machines never had. See, on this type of machine, a partial key press will register the wrong number. Look at what happens on the Burroughs calculator if I hit the 9, but don't push it all the way. Unfortunately, when you're doing lots of key presses really fast, it's pretty easy to do a partial press without even noticing. And that's the problem too, the not noticing. Making a mistake isn't a big deal. If you know it happened, you just start over again. But if you didn't know it happened, then you'll get the wrong answer and think it's right. Here's where the controlled key mechanism comes in. On the comptometer, whenever a key doesn't press all the way down, the whole machine jams. All the buttons lock up and you can't do anything. The control key button clears this kind of a jam and lets you keep on adding. You can actually see the button pop up when the jam happens. 
If you're lucky, you'll remember what you were doing at the moment of the jam, and you'll be able to resume your calculation without clearing and starting over. You clear the machine to zero with this lever here. This isn't a heavy-duty crank like on a printing machine. It's very light and clicky. The dial's clear in a mysterious two-stroke motion. You push the lever all the way forward and the numbers go wild. And then you pull it back and they all go to zero. Sometimes mine doesn't clear all the way. I guess someone did not attend to the oiling. Overall, this thing is really great. It's a good-looking machine and also very capable. Multiplication is very easy, and there's also a strange and easy process for doing long division. I don't want to get too involved here, but if you're interested, click over here for a bonus video. Felt's company never dominated the market like Burroughs did, even though their machines were better. Felt's old manufacturing plant in Chicago is now some fancy apartments. But hey, look up there. They never painted over the sign. Dor Felt made a lot of money, built himself a mansion in Holland, Michigan called the Felt Estate. You can go visit it today. The place has had a bit of a strange history. I'm not making this up. After Felt died, the place was eventually turned into a Catholic school, then a convent for nuns, then a seminary, then a police station, then a prison. Then there was about 20 years during which the place was completely abandoned. It was totally overgrown and it became known locally as sort of a spooky haunted house. Legend sprang up that the property was inhabited by big-headed mutant kids called melon heads. I'm sure Dor felt wonder during his own life. A hundred years from now, what will people think of me and my life's work? The answer is melon heads. Mm -hmm.